All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the Around the World podcast. I'm your host, Lucas Kleinmeier, and my good friend, Jacob Hernandez. This is a podcast where we talk about the beautiful game of football and interesting topics surrounding the beautiful game from Premier League, Champions League, MLS, maybe some national team games. Um, and yeah, we're going to just have fun with this, and we'll see how it goes. First up, so Jacob, how are you doing? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm tired. These early mornings are they're tough. They're getting tougher. But you know, might just be some, yeah, might be some senioritis, you know. But definitely a bit of that sprinkled in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're gonna get started with Premier League first. Um, our first topic is gonna be about Arsenal, one of the most decorated clubs, and the Premier League, and your favorite. Uh, My J-Bow. favorite club. We have fallen off quite a bit lately, and after the January transfer window, our squad lacks a lot of depth. We sold players and didn't buy anyone. Do you think this is going to affect them the rest of the season? Let's get your take on it first. <laughs> the Arsenal guy. All right. You seem well, a little bit amped up for this one, Jacob. They are the first one on our sheet, on our notes. <laughs> this is the really. first one. So we're sixth right now. So we're, we're in a good spot. However, sixth is not really where a club like Arsenal need to be. We have three games in hand on West Ham in fifth and Man United in fourth. So these are must-win games. Yeah. Plus, we're out of European competitions because we didn't qualify for any of them last year. So I think the but lack just, of extra competitions will yeah. will be able to help us. So I mean, if we can field a, a full strength lineup, I think we can make it into fifth or fourth. I mean, they're yeah, like you said, they're in six right now, and they're on forty two points. West Ham's on forty two, Man United's on forty six, and Man United's in fourth, and they have three games in hand. And to be honest, I think Arsenal's playing better than both West Ham and Man United right now. And like you said, the, they don't, they're not in Champions League and they're not in the Europa League. So that could definitely help them with squad rotation and just getting guys arrested because that does play a factor. And when you're in a long season like the Prem, when, when there's 38 games, um, so that definitely does matter. They do play today against Wolves. Um, they're favored to win that, I believe, 56%. So... I mean, we'll see. I think Arsenal's in a really good spot. I definitely think they're in a better spot than they have been in the past couple of years when they're with Unai Emery. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think Mikel Arteta's definitely like got a stamp on this team now. And they may lack a serious amount of depth, and that could come back to bite them at the end of the year if there's any injuries because they just have a bunch of young players, uh, Smith Rowe, uh, Saka, uh, Martinelli, Nic- Martinelli, Nicol Pepe, uh, Pepe, and they sold a bombing to Barcelona, which if you told an Arsenal fan two years ago they did that, they would have lost their minds. So they have just now uh, Lacazette up top. But I think, barring they don't get bit by an injury bug, I think they should, they should be okay. I agree. And our next topic, um, Frankie Lampard. He's back. Old Frank Lampard's back in the Premier League. Um, he managed his club Chelsea, where he was a legend for um, a couple years ago before he got sacked, and then uh, Thomas uh, Tuchel took over. But now he's a, uh, the manager at Everton. Um, and Everton right now is having one of the worst seasons <laughs> they've had in their history. Yeah. 16th right um, now. Right now they're – Two five. points out of ele- uh, relegation. Yeah, so he's taking over a team that's two points out of relegation. Everton's always been that mid-table type team, so it's kind of interesting that they're in 16th with a squad that I don't think is that bad. So, Jacob, do you think Frank Lampard can get them out of relegation and just get them kind of in a respectable place? Because they're not going to get – top four, even, like, top eight. Just don't um, get relegated. Yeah, that has to be their goal this yeah. season. Don't get relegated. Um, the teams below them, Norwich, I think they're going down no matter what. Yeah. Their squad is pretty weak. Watford, I don't think they have a shot either no. on 18 points so far. And then the two teams below them as well. Newcastle, their squad has improved a lot. I think they'll stay out of the rele- relegation zone. But Burnley... Um, they Burnley's sold a couple players. It's going to be between Everton and Burnley, I'd say, to get out of that last spot. And I have I have faith in Everton. They have a bit of a stronger squad. They still have Richarlison up top, yeah. the England goalkeeper, and Jordan Pickford. So I think Everton, with Frank Lampard, will stay out of the relegation zone. Yeah, Newcastle's been a meet in their last five games as well. So I would I would expect uh, Newcastle to stay out. But yeah, Everton, like you said, just has – I think their current team is better than those uh, teams below them. Um, it's kind of weird. The starting uh, England national team goalkeeper 
is fighting for relegation in Premier League, Jordan Pickford. Pickford. So, yeah, uh, not good for um, Everton this year. But I do believe they'll stay out of relegation because they get relegated. I mean, that's a that's big. That's big because Everton's never that team that qualifies for Champions League. They're usually in the Europa League, and they're always in that mid-table team. They're always respectful. They can always grind out results. We don't expect them to, but relegation is kind of new for them. Uh, they had some good transfers this window as well. Donny van de Beek on loan and Deli Alley on a free transfer. I think <laughs> they'll make a big impact. Is Deli Alley a good transfer? Um, He's been good for the past like two he years. He hasn't been good. Uh, I, a bit of nostalgia from FIFA in the past. He had some good potential. I mean, Philly. Uh, it, there's a you know, it's a shot. I mean, Philippe uh, Coutinho uh, is on loan to Aston Villa, and he's almost like he, like he was at Liverpool. So Deli Alley could return to his old form. He could. He could be the star of Everton, but a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs. And we'll end our Premier League uh, talk with um, the EFL Cup final. Is I believe it's believe this Sunday or Saturday? I believe it's. I believe. I believe it's it Sunday. Sunday. Uh, yeah, Liverpool and Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sunday at eleven thirty. In yep. our time zone. Yep. Uh, Liverpool and Chelsea and EFL Cup final. So uh, Chelsea reign uh, Champions League uh, champs. Liverpool won it two years ago. Um, Chelsea coming off a club World Cup as well. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, Chelsea uh, two for two in uh, finals uh, this year. Uh, so we're trying. We're trying to go through our thoughts and predictions of that one. Uh, what you thinking? What you feeling right now? So there's reports that Reese James will be returning for, from injury for this game. That's huge. And I think that can be absolutely massive for Chelsea this, for this game. Um, Reese James was a big part of their back three, back five, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Um, he's one of the best right backs in the world, I'd say. And I think he's a big upgrade over Azpilicueta at, at that right wing back spot. Yeah. So if he plays... I predict Chelsea will win two to one. Yeah, you're not wrong. They definitely did miss Reese James. He's one of those that you're just you're kind of like he's kind of under radar, kind of X factor type of guys. We don't really realize quite how important he is. Um, so Chelsea did play a uh, Lilia. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. But they did um, roll out pretty much mostly of their first team, uh, minus their front three. If you want to argue uh, Lukaku and you know there's situations going on with him, but you know. Other guys, maybe Mason Mount and other people. But um, Chelsea's just been really good in the finals this year. I mean, they shut out Man City in that Champions League final, even though Man City didn't play with striker. But, I mean, Man City's Man City. They're still, like, the best club in the world probably right now. Um, so much money. Uh, Liverpool, um, they, they got Salah Mane back from AFCON a couple weeks ago. Um, they're in pretty good form. I think it'll be a really good game. I think besides Man City, these are definitely the two best clubs in England. Definitely – Two uh, teams I love to watch personally, maybe mainly for Pulisic for uh, the men's national team in Liverpool because of Salah and Mane and Firmino and Jota. And now they got Luis Diaz in that he's, signing, who's he's, just he's been he's fantastic. filthy. Um, so for me, I'm going to say a 1 1 tie in 90 minutes, and then I believe Chelsea's going to win 4 3 in pens. Maybe probably a Jorginho pen. A little hop tie. and a skip. A little and hop a, and a skip. And slot it bottom corner. I definitely think. It's going to go to least extra time, though. But I say Chelsea and Pens. Mm, Liverpool's attack is just too powerful, even for a great Chelsea defense to keep them out. <laughs> and you have to think, it is a cup final. It's never – it's re- very rarely ever cup finals are, like, goals galore. I mean, it was, like, a five-goal game. It's always really tight. And now on we're going to – the Champions League. <laughs> on to the Champions League. <laughs> so we just talked about Chelsea, so we might as well just start with them. Chelsea, Chelsea Lille. And Lille's. Chelsea got that 2-0 win at Havertz the Stamford Bridge. in the eighth minute, Pulisic in the thir- 63rd. Nice to see from us Americans. We love our, our Captain America, the LeBron James of soccer, as some may say. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Chelsea got that 2-0 first leg win at home. Got that shutout, though, which is mainly important. Shout out. Big shutout. Shut no away goals. No away goals. That's really important. Um, uh, they got out of shot 15-9. And only had four shots on target to uh, Lille's two. And they had possession just by 1% more. But um, it was kind of a vintage Chelsea performance. We kind of absorbed a lot of pressure in that first half. And they sat back and countered. And uh, Kai Harvard's in the eighth minute got that goal. And the American boy, Captain America himself, got that second goal. 
It's probably the worst gritty I've ever seen. Absolutely terrible. That was, yeah, uh, Jamar Chase and has got to. Jamar Chase needs gotta, to go over to England and teach him. Yeah, not good. But, but good result there. Good Two result. 2-0 at home. No yeah. away goals. I love you talk, saw Mason, Mal, Lukaku, Jorginho. Uh, they didn't play at all, so you would have to think they're probably playing in the cup final. Um, so, yeah. There's that, but Chelsea should still be fine for yeah. Sunday. Yeah, Tuesday to Sunday, good enough for us. Yeah. Villarreal, Juventus. 1-1 one, one draw. In Spain, Juventus get a big away goal. Um, will they take it back to Italy and, and knock Villarreal out? I think so, uh, personally. I think Juventus is just a better team than Villarreal. But Villarreal did pretty good, actually. I mean, they got scored on the first 32 seconds. Uh Benovic. Vlahovic in Vlahovic. 32 seconds. Uh, Parejo equalized in the 66th minute. Absolute fodder in FIFA, but in real life, he's a, a bit of a good good player. Yeah. Um, there ain't much to say about this game besides uh, Ty. It wasn't really that much an exciting game to watch. Not teams had, These two teams only had five shots on target in total between these two. Um, a lot of fouls. So, but you would expect Juventus to come back to Italy and finish it off. So, Vlahovic, good start good at start. Juventus. I think he'll he'll grab another and and put him through. And another game besides that is Ajax and Benfica. And Benfica. You know, I th- I thought Ajax was just going to blow him out of the water, but Benfica, Portuguese side, they they pulled through. I mean, they were playing at home. So that might have made a, a big difference. They had 17 shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only four on target, but I think they did they did pretty well to put them in a good spot to go back to the Netherlands and grind out hopefully a result and knock out a, a big team like Ajax. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I think a lot of people would kind of get caught up in the Ajax of about a couple years ago when they went on that m- miracle run to the Champions League semifinals, and obviously all those players are gone. They're all, they're they're all gone, all went, to, gone to bigger went, teams, went to right. bigger teams and bigger clubs. But Ajax still is a good team, so we'll see what goes out there. But you'd have to think whatever team gets out of that would probably get eliminated unless they get depending Next on, round, probably. Unless probably they, elimination. Yeah. So I'm not sure this result matters too much in the grand scheme of the Champions League. Yeah, unless they can upset someone. Um, so, our final game of the Champions League is we're going to recap a little bit of Manchester United and Atletico Madrid. They played to a 1 1 draw uh, yesterday in Spain. So, any, any early uh, thoughts on that? Anything that just jumps out at you immediately? Um, no Ronaldo goal, I'd say. I was, I was going to predict a Ronaldo goal here. I didn't think Manchester United were going to score if it wasn't coming from their main man up top. But. Anthony Alanga, after his missed penalty to knock him out of the cup, he's definitely came back, got it out of his head, and and scored a, a pretty crucial goal for Manchester United. Yep, he definitely did. It was a it was actually a pretty good game to watch. Manchester United dominated possession in that game, and both teams really didn't have hit three shots on target uh, a total combined between both. And uh, Madrid had a one, and they scored. Unless you want to count, uh, Felix is diving higher than hit off the post. And went in. Yeah, Ronaldo didn't look the best uh, in this game, but everyone is tend to have an off game. Or so they still have Paul Pugba off, which is kind of interesting. I don't want to start anything, but you know, with him, Pretty every every year it's always like new Pugba's haircut, early. new new hair color, new hairstyle. Yeah, uh, definitely. But uh, who are you taking that second leg? We'll probably preview that on this show next week. But uh, next week, yeah. Um, this week. going back to England. Um, United with a crucial away goal. That is true. That away goal does matter, but do you really trust Manchester United's defense to keep them from not uh, scoring? I don't think so. Their defense is pretty pretty weak, even with the addition to Varane. Because um, Griezmann came off the bench and Luis Suarez didn't even play this game. Yeah, I mean, oblak has been a bit shaky for Atletico Madrid in that I don't know what's been happening to him, but I think Atletico Madrid are just a, a better side overall. Right now, yeah, and definitely Manchester United. They just leak goals that they just can't leak. And I think before you get in the Champions League, it's just the more consistent you got to be. So 
Uh, who knows? We'll see. But I think I might be taking uh, Atletico. They they grind out results they every do. year. They're they do. And they're scary. So we'll touch a little bit on our two local teams. Maybe just one, if you want to count uh, FC Cincinnati at the Crew. But I'm is starting this week. Uh, FC Cincinnati is opening up on the road versus the second year club, uh, my f- just favorite team in the whole world, Austin FC. Um, FC Cincinnati, they've had three straight wooden spoons. They finished last place. Um, what are the spoons? <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what you get when you get last that's, place. And last, you get a wooden nice. get a wooden spoon. They that's a tr- that's more trophies than Tottenham. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep, they finished last place. Um, they got Pat Noon, new head coach from Philadelphia, and they got a bunch of new signings, about a full a lot of fullbacks. They pulled a uh, Ray Gaddis out of retirement, and they're opening up on the road versus Austin. So. Another year for the orange and blue. See another year of disappointment. <laughs> Especially uh, after that that super draft pick of a goalkeeper. After you just signed a goalkeeper, not sure about that one. And we'll see how it plays out. Passing up on a, a fantastic central defender. Yeah, they, that's true. But they just they need to get their goalkeeper situation right. Kenneth Vermeer and uh, T. Tom were just horrific last Actually, year. They were not very good. Uh, so Alec Han, they got from the backer from Atlanta. He should be. Uh, pretty solid for most games. He's going to face a lot of shots because that back line still needs a lot of work. Uh, Jeff Cameron's on his last legs. Haglund's just... Just Nick he, Haglund. He's just he's, not the best. He's not the best. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Valencia, and they got uh, Blackett from England. So Hopefully Ian Murphy, their their other first-round pick, can, can prove us wrong and show us that it was but, the correct pick to, to take Solentano in the first round as a goalkeeper. They're playing in a different formation, too. They put a, um, a back five, back three most times last year. Now they're playing um, um, a 4-1, 2-1-2, two, two, a diamond, um, which is what Philadelphia Union played, and that's what Pat Noonan, the assistant coach, uh, was with the past couple of years. But not quite sure they have the players yeah, for that because I don't know who's going to play. Of, lots of wingers. Uh, lots that, of wingers. That FC Cincinnati signed in the past, so I'm yeah. not sure how they're going mean, to mean fit them into the, into the squad. But I mean, we'll see. We'll I mean, see uh, what Pat does. I mean, Yuga Kubo is their designated player, left winger that came in 2020, and, he's been, and he plays defensive midfield last year. <laughs> if that tells you anything what the state of their club is, you just that that's it. Because they still not, have Harris Mendenuin, who's like 37 years old, I believe, and he's on his last legs. Alan Cruz doesn't play. He turns 37 March 8th, so he's, he's basically ancient. And, I mean, it's going to be another year where probably Luciano Acosta is going to have to carry most of that attack. Do you think Brenner's going to – Maybe get double enough. digits this year. I I they, certainly hope so because he, he absolutely needs to get to double digits if FC Cincinnati doesn't want to win another tin pot trophy. Because he had wooden spoon. Because he they bought him for obviously a club record thirteen million dollars and that's top five in MLS transfers in MLS history. And he, I mean, you can't. He's still bl- twenty two. You got a lot of time to grow. You can't blame him because of the team around him, but he's got to be better. Definitely finishing wise, so uh, we'll see what happens. We might recap that a little bit uh, next week. But Austin is coming off their first year, and they were last place in the West too. So two teams that finished bottom of each conference opening up, and I have no love for Austin at all. So um, we'll see. And just one little thing to touch on. I'll not spend much time on it. My favorite team, the Columbus Crew, they opened up versus the Vancouver Whitecaps. So hopefully they can get back in the playoffs and hopefully win their MLS Cup because they won in 2020. Um, Vancouver got hot and then last year made the playoffs and got bounced first round of Sporting KC. But Cruz got a really good team with Zalaran, Zardes, uh, Yaya Boa they signed with Nagby, uh, Mensa. So they still have a really good squad. I expect them back in the playoffs. Uh, but we'll see. Opening day. Uh, yeah. I, I hope so. I hope to see uh, an Ohio club make a, pl- make a playoff push. Yeah, you know, last year. FC Cincy or Columbus Crew, whichever one, it'd be great to just see someone win some games. For sure, and definitely, definitely makes the um, the hell is real uh, derby uh, more exciting. Those they they have a couple of good games uh, last year. Uh, the crew came back. Uh, they were down two uh, one, and they scored two goals in two minutes from their uh, third string center four at the time. But now he's the intention of starting uh, Miguel Berry, who might start uh, this weekend. So uh, we'll see. So that should be interesting and fun. Um, any last thoughts before we end this episode? Um, I think we touched on it all. All our notes are are nice and finished. So thank you guys for listening to the first of many episodes of the Around the World podcast. 
We will recap our predictions that we made this week and preview the next week on our next episode. Yep. Well, um, I hope to see you see you back. <laughs> yeah, we'll, pre- we'll pretty much about uh, the same um, outlet, outlet um, as a show. We'll obviously talk about Premier League, maybe some La league games. We'll talk about some Barca. We didn't talk about Barca this week. We'll talk about some Barca. Um, Champions League. Champions League. And we'll recap the two uh, MLS, MLS games, games probably yeah. if we have time. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All Take right. us away, Jacob. See you next time.